What is up amigos? Today we're talking about sources and sinks and the math behind them. So last week we went through potential flow and what it is. This week we'll be going through sources and sinks which tie in with potential flow and we often put these objects into potential flow when we need them. So just to begin with, a source and a sink is pretty much what they sound like. So a source is on the left here where we have a point source and then we have flow coming out of it in a 2D fashion radially. A sink is the exact opposite where we have the flow going into it. So some common example, a common example, really the most common one is for a sink is when you have literally a sink, for example, like in a kitchen and you have water in there and then you unplug it and then the water comes in radially inwards and in a two dimensional plane into the center. But there's a bunch of other situations where you would want to put this into your uh, potential flow or even CFD. So for example, if you had a leak somewhere and you had high pressure on one side and then on the other side, the flow comes out radially. So one side would be the sink because the flow is going into it. The other side is a source because the flow is coming out of it. Another example is if you have a turbojet, for example, if you have a plane and you wanted to simulate the flow going through the turbojet or the turbofan, then you would put in the inlet a sink because the flow is going into it. And then in the outlet, you would then put a source because the flow is coming out of it. So those are some examples as to when sources and sinks are beneficial. And there are a bunch of other situations as well. So what are these in terms of mathematical um, their equations? So generally in textbooks, you'll see them in polar coordinates, what we'll be going through. I'm going to go through them in polar and Cartesian. So we have two different sets of equations. They're exactly the same uh, in terms of what they actually mean. They're just in different coordinate systems. And we'll be going through another variation as well. So to begin with, let's say for this source or sink, it doesn't really matter, but just for the source, we have a line around there, a circle. And this is at a distance of R from the center. So that, that radius is R. So the source strength, Q dot, is VR2 pi R. So VR is the velocity of the flow coming outwards in radially. The uh, V theta equals zero. So the velocity around is zero. It's just coming completely out radially. So at this line, the flow going through this line is the velocity of this flow times the circumference of this circle. So that's simple enough. So rearranging this, we can then say VR equals Q dot on two pi R. So we know from last week from the velocity potential um, uh, video that the velocity potential phi, if we then were to partially derive this in respect to one direction, for this case in the r direction, this would then give us vr, so the velocity in this direction. If we want to do it for the theta direction, we just have d phi on d theta and then we'll get v theta. So to find out what phi is, to actually figure out what phi is the velocity potential from this situation, all we need to do is integrate this quantity, vr. And if we do that, we'll come out to be phi equals q dot on two pi ln r. So that means that's the velocity potential for this source here in um, polar coordinates. And it's also for the sink as well. The only difference between a source and a sink is this q dot term will be positive for the source and negative for the sink because for the source is coming out for the sink is going in. Now, another variation that you will see in textbooks is sometimes instead of this q dot two pi here, they'll specify another variable called mu, let's say mu x, whatever, it doesn't really matter. They'll put some variable here and I'll say that equals q dot on two pi. So phi equals mu x ln r. And if we were to differentiate this with respect to r, you'd then just get what vr is, which is this equation here. And that would actually be ux on r. So that is for polar coordinates and the two different um, general sy systems that you'll see. What about for Cartesian coordinates? Well, this is also pretty simple. It's a bit more complex because it's Cartesian, but still it's fairly straightforward. So the velocity in the X and Y direction for the U, uh, the U velocity in this direction is lambda, which again is the strength, two pi. This is another notation that you will see in textbooks a lot. X on X squared plus Y squared. And the velocity in the uh, V velocity in the X and Y um, system is lambda on two pi, y on x squared plus y squared. So if we were to integrate these two to get phi, we would then get lambda on two pi ln 
x squared plus y squared square root of both of them. So regardless of which quantum system you're using and which notation you're using, we now have a few different equations to show you what the velocity potential are in these different systems. And then you can put this into potential flow or whatever, and you can then derive it to get what the velocities are in the different directions. So that's this video. If you'd like to make sure to like the subscribe button and I'll see you next one. Peace amigos.